one of the questions I'm asked all the time as a stylist and a bridal store owner is what are styled shoots and why we do them? Yeah. So how, how do you answer that question? Oh gosh, we get questions about this all the time from photographers and um, I think a lot of people do it because they think it's just like a mark of success that if mm -hmm. you're doing styled shoots then you've made it or mm -hmm. you're going to make it mm -hmm. or you're automatically going to be published. I think for us like the most important thing when we're doing a styled shoot is to make sure that we have a purpose to it. So one example is when we worked together on the um, new brand shoot that we did with the blue dress mm -hmm. um, in New York, the giant amazing blue mm -hmm. dress in New York. It was so pretty. We knew going into that that we were shooting very specifically for a brand and a website that wasn't launched yet. And we needed the images to really um, put that brand across to our new client base in a way that we didn't have those images available. And so I think that allowed us to really get on the same page of the the style of it and the purpose of it and the vision for it, we could all catch that vision. And knowing exactly that those images were gonna make up that website and then we could also hopefully get them published as like a cool mm -hmm. um, second bonus was really, um, it just kind of brought the whole team together. So I would say it's great to go in to get published and it's great to just do it because you want to do it, but don't do it just because you're supposed to, like have a, a reason and a purpose. I agree. One of the reasons that I do styled shoots is for marketing purposes for the mm -hmm. store. Yeah. You know, it's one thing to use an image from your designer, but it's right. another thing to sort of create this whole marketing campaign for your own yeah. store. You know, it's about representing yeah. your brand. Yeah. So picking a gown from a designer that you love mm -hmm. and then creating the story for your own brand and yeah. interpreting that for your own brand. And I think yeah. that's invaluable. I was thinking about that for you, like, um, because they kind of send the same sort of stock photos mm -hmm. the designers do to each of the shops right mm -hmm. so has it ever happened where two shops use the same it hasn't photo? but you know yeah. as competition is increasing and yeah. they're allowing stores closer and closer together to right. carry the same lines right. it totally yeah. feasibly feasibly could happen yeah and the thing yeah. is you know that gown and that photo that they're sending is beautiful mm. and wonderful but it's representing their brand that's right it's not yeah. representing your brand yeah so if you love yeah. that gown great but take it and create a styled shoot around your brand yeah. that gets your message across and yeah. it's speaking to the bride that you want to reach yeah i, I love it's that because so it's not like you're not necessarily like just adopting their entire brand or their entire right. line you're going through and saying as a curator these are the dresses i want that represent my ideal exactly. client and customer so I love that. I love that when I look at one of your ads in a magazine, like it's never, it's unlike anything else in that book. And when you're flipping through, you can tell. Well, thank if it's you because like, you usually shot it. Oh, well. <laughs> Maybe that's why I love it. Um, but I love that because you can really tell when somebody's just used the like stock photo that was in the studio. And not that there's anything wrong with studio. We've yeah, done some yeah, of that. Yeah. But I love just saying, this is a dress that speaks to me. And now let me actually go create this whole other vision, this whole other shoot. And this whole ad that's specific to your it store. It makes a huge difference, yeah. 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 So speaking of that, the yeah. other question I often also get is, mm -hmm. how do you go about planning these styled shoots? Yeah. So who takes the lead yeah. and how does the whole concept come about? Yeah. So what do you think about that? Well, I feel like the person who has the strongest vision on it is, should take the lead. And we've had it where, um, you know, we had a specific project like that new brand or mm -hmm. the pro photo in the snow shoot that mm -hmm. we did together where mm -hmm. we really had to achieve um, a set goal. And then we've also had it where it was like um, the veil shoot mm -hmm. that we did the six fails six uh -huh. ways or yes. kind of like that um where you really had the vision and so you totally took the lead and i think the person who's got the biggest vision will have the most passion and um will just it won't feel like work and so it'll just kind of come together really fast and get everybody else on board mm -hmm. catching that vision but i also loved our ballerina shoot because we just knew we all needed to play for a little while and so we just kind of said generally ballerina and yeah. then we all really could interpret and that. And that shit was amazing because yeah. I think we yeah. just sort of did it like, oh, let's do this for fun. Yes. And then it turned yeah. into the most magical thing. Yeah. But I yeah. think it was because it was coming from a place of us not having a lot of pressure and not even yes. really necessarily knowing yes. what it was for. We just yeah. thought, you know, you were inspired by something to do with ballerinas. Yeah. And I chose the gown and it yeah. just, it yeah. was magical. Yeah. yeah. And I love that because I think, um, you know, people get in such, like such a checklist of success of doing these style shoes. Well, you have to do it to what we were talking about earlier. But sometimes we forget that we're all creatives and we just need to go and like not have a time constraint, not mm -hmm. have a specific thing we're trying to mm -hmm. achieve. And like you said, that was, I think, maybe the most magic yeah. we've created. It was pretty gorgeous. I really yeah. like that. Yeah. That said, I do think that um, you, you need to have definitely start with a yeah. point or a source of inspiration yes. that everyone can work, work off yes. of. Yeah. Um, but it is nice to have one person be the point person. Yeah. Whether it's the visionary, sometimes it's not the visionary. You mm. know, if you have an event planner involved in the shoot, right. sometimes it's yeah. best to put them in charge yes. because... They're naturally gifted at that. Yes, because yes. <laughs> the creative mind sometimes yes. is like... Yes. So they can set, because yeah. you really do, should ideally have a time 
timeline for the shoot yeah. should really have an idea of what yeah. shots you want to achieve yes. especially if it's for branding or marketing yes. you know you want to get yeah. you want to make sure you have certain iconic images yeah. so it's nice to have those in place yeah that's true when we were shooting in New York we knew we had four looks mm -hmm. and you're in the city and the lights dropping fast so we didn't need to have mm -hmm. um, I feel like maybe even like who, like, was that Dee Dee or somebody kind of stepped up and was like, guys, let's keep moving because we were like, we could shoot you in a blue a dress keeper. all day. You always need a timekeeper um, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I love yeah. that. That's really true. Yeah. You want to make sure that you um, don't get so caught up getting that one shot that you miss a bunch of other opportunities. I wanted to ask you, actually, like, I know where we go for inspiration of, you know, 1940s Harvard Bazaar covers um, or the latest Sanity Fair. But where do you, like, if you're going to get inspiration for, like, even the black bow tie um, for the dress that we just did in February. Mm -hmm. Like, where does that stuff come from? Where do you go to... It look. comes from all different places. Yeah. I mean, it really can come from anywhere. I mean, yeah. it can come from me seeing a gown and thinking, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I have to shoot that. Yeah. Or it can come from you saying, you know, like with the, yeah. the shoot that we did in New York City, mm -hmm. you know, my vision is a very grand ball gown and I want it yeah. to be very timeless and very classic. And so yeah. then that's my inspiration and I just run with it. Yeah. You know, sometimes I've been inspired by a painting yeah. or architecture. Like you just Ooh, sort of that. never know, yeah. you know, and, and it just sparks an idea and yeah. you have to wait for the right opportunity to present itself or yeah. you have to you know gather together yeah. a group of talents and yeah. and make it happen do you pull like tear sheets of stuff just to I like do. have like that yeah. shoe box of magazines yeah. of course pinterest you yeah. know who doesn't but yeah. there's something about a real magazine yes. that yes. i love I agree. and i think that's part of the reason why i created my book yeah was i wanted the shoot some of the shoots that i've done to feel more permanent and yeah. lasting yeah. and of course a book can make that happen yeah because yeah. it's like so hard when it's like you can you get like what two or three on instagram before people are like we got it yes exactly <laughs> so you want something yes. where you can really yes. keep it forever exactly. i love that yeah yeah and then tell me about a little bit about who the other players are in a photo shoot yeah. you know who else should besides the photographer mm -hmm. and the stylist or yeah. bridal store owner yeah. who else should really be brought into this collaboration well, I think you got to have really good beauty, you know, um, whether that's a hair artist separately and makeup artist separately or somebody does both. Mm -hmm. But that person, I think, really has to get on board with the vision. Otherwise, you end up with like 60s mod makeup and like a Absolutely. more romantic Absolutely. vibe. Absolutely. And I'm yeah. always making sure yeah. that the beauty person knows the fashion yeah. in advance. Yes, I love that. I love that. You have to go hand in hand. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, even for like walkthrough, I love that you always like do that email to us and to um, Aaron that's like, Here's the, you know, what the what I was thinking for hair. Like, mm -hmm. she can be a creative and interpret, but you're kind of saying this would flatter the dress. This is what would look really good mm -hmm. with that. So I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And florist, yeah. of course. We always yes. like a good floral designer yeah. to be brought in. Yeah. Not always. Not with all of our shoots have we used flowers. Yeah, that's but right. Um, if it's a wedding inspired shoot, certainly, of course, there has to be flowers. Yeah. Yeah. Every once in a while, we'll bring in food, depending yeah. if we're trying to recreate, you know, the reception yeah. or um, yeah. And then the I think venue. Be. I think like... Um, if you're not shooting in the studio or um, if it's not just like, I know you've done some shoots like out in the field but, um, where like a truck was maybe more important or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, I feel like just having that really great backdrop of grit, like for us, it's strong classic architecture. Mm -hmm. um, but depending on what the style of the shoot is, where it's being done can really make or break it. And that's sometimes the hardest thing to find, I feel like, because you have to work with, are they available during the week? Is right. there a price? For, right. Um, allow you to use it for free. That's yeah. always nice. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of that, actually, um, I was just teaching at a workshop, uh, a conference actually, and a girl came up and she said, you know, I really trust your opinion on this. Um, I, I did this styled shoot and um, some of these other like vendors want the photos. And I was like, uh-huh. And she said, well, they want to like post it. And I'm afraid that they, if I don't put a watermark on it, they won't give me credit. And what I said to her was, I said, you know, I totally know that you feel like connected to these photos, but I want you to go back home and look at them and just take away any pieces that wouldn't have existed without those other vendors, those mm -hmm. other creatives. Mm -hmm. And then look at that photo and see if you'd want to post that. And she just had this like light bulb moment of, I think people um, get a little shell shocked when <clears throat> they might need to charge or pay for a venue or help cover costs of the, flower, the florist. But um, there's a lot of expenses that photographers don't realize that other um, vendors actually have to cover. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I think credit is so important. Yeah. I mean, we're going to get into that a little bit more, yeah. but it's like, that's the reason, one of the reasons why you're doing it. Yeah. And 
you have to give credit for your talents, yeah. of course, anyone who's involved. Yeah. And to your point, I used to think that. I used to think, oh, I'm just a stylist. Mm -hmm. How much am I really contributing to oh, this shoe? No. And no it was way. actually my husband, the word yeah. of wisdom, who said to me, think about it. If that dress isn't beautiful, She'd be naked. <laughs> that's really yeah. part of yeah. what's making the whole shoot. Totally. So every yeah. each piece has equal weight, and I think it's so important. Yeah. yeah. Like Leanne in New York in jeans is not the same. Right. Like Leanne exactly. So now let's talk about that. What's your opinion about models? Yeah. You know, do you do you prefer a professional model? Do you mm. prefer someone who's just a beautiful couple? Mm. I have strong opinions about it, but I'm curious yeah. to know what you think. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I, I agree with what you're saying earlier, but it depends on the purpose of the shoot. Mm -hmm. So um, if it's something where you want it to feel more like a wedding, we have had trouble getting chemistry if they were just two models who were meeting mm -hmm. for the first time. But we also know that some of our best work happens when we can take the weight off of our shoulders of coaching a model how to hold themselves, like how right. to pose. Um, and we can kind of just be a little more in the moment than trying to make them feel comfortable. And so some of our best stuff has come from a Leanne or um, Aurora, who mm -hmm, we worked with, mm -hmm. um, or even Catherine, who was the ballerina, where the, they could just do the movements. They knew how to hold their body, and we could focus on lighting and composition and moment. So I would say we definitely have a preference, generally speaking, especially more editorial for the models. Mm -hmm. But if it's truly like a wedding workshop, they need to be able to right. make out. Yes, <laughs> so exactly, exactly. There, there's that. Sometimes they might want to work out if they just that's not right. We found that before too. Know, you know, <laughs> be surprised. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> tend to, to lean to, more towards a professional yeah. model for that reason yeah. alone that you can just move yeah. along. You know, yes. that it's just, yeah. you can get the shot and move <clears> on to the next and there's not a lot of waiting for that model to warm up. Yes. And yeah. you don't have to spend so much time coaching, yeah. you know. So there are certainly people in the world who are beautiful mm -hmm. and gorgeous, but when yeah. you get them in front of the camera, yes. they're not comfortable. That's and it a takes totally a different long thing. Time. Yeah. So my suggestion, if I had to choose between a professional model who maybe was not quite as beautiful and mm -hmm. someone who was drop dead gorgeous and has never modeled before, yeah. I'll always go with a professional I model. Agree with I that. think it makes a difference. Yeah. And you know, people ask me that a lot about models too. How do you find models? Mm, and yeah. I've developed relationships with agencies, you yeah. know. In, in the general area and yeah. they always have up and coming models yep. again who are new but are, do have experience mm -hmm. who need to build their book and need to build their portfolio yeah. so the agency is always willing to allow us to use them mm -hmm. in exchange for your photographs yeah. so that they can build their portfolio and they have that experience Sometimes it's hard to get in until you've done a few styled shoots, but yeah. if you can develop a relationship with a reputable agency, then you know that their models are going to be yeah. professional and on time and, you know, as, as they appear in their images. Yeah. I really think that's the best way to go. Yeah. Yeah. One of the coolest things for styled shoots that I think you've done such an amazing job, and I feel like you've done this since we've, like, known you. Somebody was asking, I think that we're coming up on, like, 10 years, actually, Ooh, which is crazy. That is crazy. Um is I think it's such an amazing way for an up and coming business. And I feel like you've always been established, but, but for people who are watching at home, for somebody to get on the radar of a designer or um, a wedding blog or some sort of like larger platform or hashtag or audience that they might not other, ever reach otherwise. And so like getting that, you're saying getting that credit to everybody, um, it's not just that they did the work so they deserve that link back or that, you know, at on Instagram. It's that if you can get them a, an image to use from that wedding we just did on Saturday mm -hmm. and then suddenly it's going through all the vendors really quickly, it's a great way for everybody to benefit and cross promote each other and share audiences. And so I feel like you've been able to kind of like skyrocket to the top because you've always worked with people and brought people in and really just like shared audiences and exposure that way. Yeah. That's partially why I yeah. love styled shoots so yeah. much is really the collaboration. Yeah. And it's putting like-minded people together yes. and talents yeah. together and creating magic. You know, yeah. and a lot of times if you're working with the right people, that source of inspiration gets put out there and everybody goes and does their own individual things. And yeah. when you come together, it's just better than you could have ever totally. imagined. So yes. you definitely have to align yourself with the right people. People for sure and yeah. especially if it's something to represent your own brand yes. you yeah. have to make sure that the other parties get your brand yes but oh yes when you can have a great collaboration it definitely helps to support each other's businesses and it's the best part for me yeah Love yeah that. yeah so let's talk about besides credit about getting paid yes. people often ask me if we yeah. get paid to do yeah. these style shoots yeah. so what do you have to say to that um well, I think what's really cool, especially when you were talking about finding good people and like-minded people to get around you, is that um, there's a lot of just helping each other out. And I, but I think that takes time to develop, and that's not something people can expect to happen right out the gate necessarily. But um, you know, we want to do a shoot for a new website, and you come or a workshop, you come help us style that. 
you want to do a new shoot for the veils. And so there's a lot of just really good um, back and forth there. But I think that takes time. Mm -hmm. And so in the beginning, um, I would say that if you really want to have a beautiful ad and there's a photographer or a florist or a makeup artist um, that you just really, really, like you can't imagine that shoot without them, be willing to at least offer. And then a lot of times what you'll find is people will say, oh, I actually have something I want to do later in the year. Can we just barter? I feel like we're a bartering community. We are. Um, so a lot of times it won't even come to that. But you, it's, I think, a little bit honoring to just say like, hey, what do you think about this? Exactly. Yeah. And you yeah. and borrow each other's talents yeah. for whatever you're yeah. doing. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the short answer to the long question is we don't get paid. Yeah. And oftentimes yeah. people as they're doing these styled shoots can expect to actually be putting out money. Yeah. But hopefully what you're getting in return in terms of the quality of the project and what you can use it for in terms yeah. of marketing makes it all yeah. worth it for yeah. sure. Yeah. And certainly, you know, for me, styling and doing these shoots has turned and for you yeah. has led to paid opportunities totally you know so for yeah. me it's a book i've been hired mm -hmm. to do national ad campaigns for certain designers yeah, so once right. you get enough of them under your belt and, and you're looking at them as a business and you're and you're really good at it it can yeah. turn into paid opportunities yeah. yeah and you have your workshops talk yes. a little bit about your workshops that you do oh okay uh we have a couple of them but the big one is walk through a wedding and it's basically a two-day workshop where photographers can come in from all over and we on day one, just walk through a wedding as if it's really happening. So getting ready, ceremony, details, reception. And that doesn't happen, or a pretend real wedding, a real fake wedding, <laughs> um, doesn't happen unless we can have all those other creatives on board. And so, I mean, we've just been like blown away at some of the things that you've put together or um, Stacy Shea for the planning has put together. And what's really cool about that is that um, it gives photographers a chance to not only grow in their talents, but also appreciate what it is to um, see those vendors come together, make it happen, give them credit, give them images. And then hopefully we have 12 people out there singing each of that creative team's mm -hmm. praises as well. Mm -hmm. So it's been really cool. We've been doing it for six years now. Because it's one thing to teach someone to yeah. shoot or teach them how to shoot a wedding, but if you don't have the environment, no way. Yeah. it's, it's yeah. next to impossible. Yeah. Imagine a cake. Yes, <laughs> you know? exactly. Yeah. And then I think it does yeah. allow them to see these collaborations, and yeah. then when they go on to do their own styled shoots, they yeah. sort of know all of the key pieces and how it all fits together. Yeah. 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 And I love that. So good. Yeah. Any common missteps that you can think of in a styled shoot and, and mm. what people should sort of be looking out for? Oh, that's a great question. I feel like... Um, like you were saying, it's great to look at the inspiration board and then interpret it and do your own thing. We have had people go totally rogue, just like we, we hadn't worked with them before, or um, maybe they just weren't used to like doing workshops or style shoots. And so the thing that came back was like, oh, that's an interesting interpretation. <laughs> um, so maybe just like a little more communication. Communication, that's what yeah. I think too. Yeah. I think you all have to be on the same yeah. page and make yeah. sure you're on the same page yes. because you've got one shot to do it. Yeah. And if you show up to your point yeah. and it's not at all what you were expecting. Yeah, and it's like, oh, okay. That can be a big yeah. one. Yeah, I would say another big one, talking about model mayhem or models in general, is we've just learned to have a good backup on standby because Always. we've had so many models flake out for workshops across the country. We did one year where we did walkthrough in 10 different cities, and I think in nine of the 10, we had to go to our backup. <gasps> oh my yeah. gosh. Yes. They weren't professional models in yes, that case. Yes. They were more people, couples. But just knowing, like, if... It, like, look at your list and, and say, who, if they weren't here, could we not pull off this style shoot? And if that's one of those people, make sure you have a plan B for them. Because if you don't have a bride or a main model, you're in trouble. You need a bride. Yeah, you need a bride. <laughs> and you always need a plan Rule number B. one, you need yeah, a bride. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about getting published because okay. that's the other common question that mm -hmm. I get is, okay, you've done this style shoot, you've mm -hmm. got this work, now what do you do with it and how do you get it published? Yeah. Well, what's kind of cool is that we have both perspectives, Justin and I, because we have the photography side, and then we also are the editors of Twin Wedding Blogs, The Black Tie Bride, and The Welcome Groom. And so we have been able to um, sort of see it from that photography side of, oh, I sent them great images. Why doesn't this fit? Mm -hmm. And then also from the editor side of just knowing it's a super busy job to be mm -hmm. the editor. You get so many submissions. And there's so many like snap judgments where it's kind of like, you didn't follow the rules for how to submit or mm -hmm. the first 30 images I yes, see aren't at a great a glance, fit. if it's yeah. not what I want, then yeah. yeah. We actually really prefer when people submit through something like a pass or Pixify or shoot proof where we can look at it kind of like a Pinterest layout. If I get a Dropbox and have to kind of, you know, click through or just see little thumbnails, it's I'm much less likely to fall in love with that shoot. So I would say just knowing their rules, following them, um, never sub submitting and then doing the, oh gosh, we have to pull it thing. We get that a couple of times. Really? Well, it's only happened, I would say, like 
maybe three times in two years, three years. I should know that. Um, but it's really a big thing when it's like it's been submitted, it's been accepted, it's scheduled for publication, and then they go, oh, we're going to put it in print or something like that. So you just got to be really careful with knowing the rules and following them. And I think knowing who you're submitting to, you yeah. know, when you target yes. a publication, yes. make sure that that yeah. shoot is right for that publication totally. because yes. otherwise it yeah. puts you in a bad light because it looks like you're just throwing, you know, yes. darts in the dark to see who's totally. going to pick it up. Yes. And I think also to your point, only submit to one publication at a time yeah. because then it just, again, it puts you in a bad light. And if you yeah. want to be published, you have to make sure you're developing these relationships, you're following yeah. the rules yes. and you're giving them product that's going to yeah. enhance their brand as yeah. well. Editors remember. They remember if you do that, the pull it thing, and they also remember if it's you're just getting spammed by them. Mm -hmm. um, somebody will, you know, sometimes people will send like, here are seven or eight links. Go through them and pick one that'll work. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times those are a no across the board because if you're not going to take the time to curate it, I'm not going to do that That's work for exactly you. exactly right. Yeah. And then yeah. through that submission process, you can develop relationships. We've yeah. developed great relationships with regional publications yeah. who will come to us and say, yeah. for our next issue, we yes. really want you to do a shoot inspired by X. Yes. So then it's like the, yeah. the publication's coming to you to do the styled shoot, yeah. which is even fabulous as I well. I think like an overarching theme is that relationships are everything in this because mm -hmm. we had lunch and I was like, oh, I just really want to do something with like gold walls and like rose colored, yeah. whatever. And then like three days later, you were like, Bliss Celebrations wants to do this shoot in Newport at Rose mm -hmm. Cliff, Rose, Rose Cliff, Cliff. Mm -hmm. and um, that would never happen if mm -hmm. we weren't out to lunch or mm -hmm. if we weren't, you know, friends, didn't have this and relationship. And dreaming of yeah. rose and gold yeah. and pretty things. So yeah. I think that people might look at that shoot and go, oh, Newport mansion, you know, whole elaborate styled shoot, cake taller than I am, mm -hmm. but they don't realize that it started over iced tea at more, where were we? Lenny's? Maury's? One of those places. Um, and just being friends with your, mm -hmm. I hate the word vendors. What should we call them? Creatives? Collaborators. Collaborators. Uh, being friends with those people first. Mm -hmm. So we've talked a little bit about collaborating, but mm -hmm. people often ask how you find people to collaborate yeah. with and what's the best way to find vendors and other professionals to do a style shoot with. Yeah, I think especially when you're getting started, right? Because mm -hmm. then it's like you don't know anybody, so mm -hmm. how do you, if you haven't worked with them, how do you get to work with them? Right. And um, we were actually just at a conference and somebody asked the question about that. And as sometimes happens in those groups, other attendees kind of bust in with advice before the leaders can mm -hmm. say anything. And they were all just saying, oh, just like ask a bunch of people, throw it out there, see who sticks. Like it doesn't hurt to ask. You'll never know unless you ask. And while I appreciated the bravery of that idea, I do think it can also come back to hurt you. And so kind of like when we were talking about publications, um, people know when you're just blasting, like, you know, dear vendor, <laughs> dear exactly, Florence. Exactly. Um, and so those people that you most dream of working with, what you don't want their first impression to be of you is a cold call or mm -hmm. a cold ask. Mm -hmm. And so I would say maybe do that, like ask a few people. It doesn't hurt to ask of people at the same level as you who are also just getting started and might really want to do a shoot. But for people that, you know, you're kind of like, oh, I can't wait to do a shoot mm -hmm. with them. I would use that same energy to ask them to, if you can take them to lunch or do a little like mixer where you invite five to ten people to get together or go to an event that's already happening and just have a few like they always say like with brands you need seven touches before mm -hmm. somebody's going to connect with you so just really build that relationship before you just straight up ask because what you don't want to be is just that person who is just coming to them and saying spend a bunch of money for my shoot um, without any kind of goodwill put into the tank so i would say um, the best way to do it is all the things I mentioned for when you're reaching, and then for people, look around and say, who's also getting started? Who needs some portfolio work? Who can I work with now? And those people that are starting when you are, are gonna be the big names in a few years. Some of them will. And so don't forget to look around before you look up. I think that's yeah. great advice. Yeah. So after a shoot, I think it's really important mm -hmm. to promote it. Yeah. And I think there are aspects about promoting the shoot that are really important and yeah. that people should follow. So what's your advice on that? Yeah, well, um, what I love about this is this is such a great chance for, let's say you have 10 people involved with the shoot when you add them all up and each of those people have a distinct audience. You know, you have an audience of um, photographers and vendors, but also bridal shop owners. Mm -hmm. And we have photographers and florists have florists. You see where this is going. Mm -hmm. And so we can all actually start to share audiences if we have a plan in place to, um, the shoot has just happened. We're excited. Let's all go share each other. This just happened with the wedding we just did. Mm -hmm. We put, put up like two or three images and everybody was able to grab it and share it and tag everybody else. The problem I think that people run into is they get overwhelmed with 
there were 10 or 12 or maybe 16 people involved and maybe they weren't all at the shoot and I'm afraid I'm going to leave somebody out mm -hmm. and they're going to get upset. Mm -hmm. And so I think whoever's coordinating that shoot, if they will just put together like a, um, a strategy and a cheat sheet for everybody, it's not that people don't want to share, they're just afraid they're going to mess it up or they don't know who was involved. Exactly. So send out that email, put it in the text form of the email where people can copy and paste it That's into right. Instagram easily, yep. make a keyboard shortcuts. Have you been able to do that? Yes. Okay, good. Um, something you can do in the iPhone settings where now I can just type wedding and they'll all pop in. And um, so it's copy and paste all the vendors and then just say, hey guys, like here's the plan 24 hours from now, let's all promote each other. Yeah. And I think just giving people that little call to action and making it really easy. You can even put some sample copy in if you want, like text. People will do that nine times out of 10, way more often than just I and then you as the photographer can pick the key images that yeah. you think are going to show enough of the shoot to yes. pique people's interest, but totally. you don't want to give away the farm. That's right. Especially if yeah. you want to get it published That's right. because That's definitely right. there's a yeah. lot of a lot of uh, magazines and blogs that will not publish something if yeah. it's been seen in its entirety or even too much of a giveaway. Yeah. So I think yeah. it's important that you choose images that get the point across of yeah. the feel of the overall feel of the shoot, yeah. but that doesn't sort of give away yeah. whatever the most spectacular piece right. of the shoot was. That's right. Like you want to show mm -hmm. that thing. You want to show that tree made mm -hmm. out of entirely made out of flowers mm -hmm. that didn't exist there. But if that's going to be the thing that's going to get your publication excited, then you have to rein it in. So it's that balance of who is the most represented in these three images. Mm -hmm. Are we hitting everybody? Mm -hmm. um, but they're just a little teaser mm -hmm. so that it doesn't go crazy on Pinterest or what have you. And then you're right. Blogs will say, no, it's all over yeah. Pinterest. Already. And then making sure everyone gets yeah. the credit so yeah. that yeah. credit is given where it's yeah. due. Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. So hopefully Mary and I just demystified the styled shoot process for you. But what we're going to do right now is focus on the top five points for creating a styled shoot. The first one is build the relationship before the ask. So don't cold call on any vendors. Just make sure that you have a relationship first. Maybe take them out to lunch. Find out what each of your visions are and your goals are for the shoot before you ask them to collaborate. Number two is that you really want to make sure that you have a clear vision for what you're hoping the shoot will be and that you're putting that together in a way so that all the other creatives can catch that vision. Um, I actually think it's a really good idea to go ahead and put together a mood board that represents all the different parts of the shoot, the dress, the fashion, the flowers. And then you can share that with all the creatives and don't be afraid to also just type in a little bit about what you're thinking. The clearer that vision, the more people are gonna be able to jump on board and the more passionate everybody will be about making that vision come to life. Number three is always have backup plans in place. And that goes for all aspects of the shoot, the venue, if there's bad weather, where is the shoot gonna take place? The model, we just talked yeah. a little bit about model mayhem. So who is your backup plan for the model? Everything from the flowers, the cake. So make sure that we have backup plans in place and that you're, you have a network of vendors that you can call favors to just in case something happens. Yeah. Number four, and I think one of the ways you build that network over time is to make sure that you have a plan in place to make sure you're giving as much credit to those vendors and those creatives as possible. And that you're not only doing that just yourself, you're actually creating a plan so that all 10 of you or all 15 of you or all three of you are doing the most to maximize the exposure from that shoot. And so that's making sure you get everybody a list of all the Instagram handles and appropriate hashtags. Don't forget that I don't want to just do at Beth Chapman Styling. I also want to do the hashtag Beth Chapman Styling because then we can really cross promote audiences. So getting everybody those handles and then also um, coming up with a plan for tomorrow is going to be the big day. We're all going to push this shoot. We're all going to promote each other and we're going to um, get a lot out of what we've just worked on. And the last tip, number five, is communicate with your collaborators. Communication is key. So whoever creates the vision board or the mood board for the shoot, make sure that it's sent out to everyone so that everybody's on the same page. And through the planning process as you're leading up to the shoot, make sure that you're checking in with everyone, make sure nobody has any questions, and that everyone's happy with the overall direction with where you're going for the shoot. So thanks so much, Mary, oh, for taking the time to be with me today and this sharing awesome. your wealth of knowledge with all of our bridal store owners out there. I think it's so great that you're doing this. I don't feel like this is anything, any kind of resource people have. And so I'm just really excited. I'm excited for all those shop owners that they just got all this awesome information. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah.